Hello everyone, uh, my name is Aidy Lynch and welcome to Sea Life Aquarium's National Science Week's Facebook live stream series. We're going to bring you the discovery of the deep blue back into your classroom. Today we're going to be taking a, a look at a small animal feature where we're going to introduce ourselves to uh, the newest member of the Sea Life family, our baby Wobby Gong Winnie. Uh, we're going to learn a little bit about these animals and how they survive on the bottom of the ocean floor. So fortunately today I've got Winnie next to me in the tank. Uh, Winnie was a, is a, um, a very, very uh, small species of uh, wobbegong called an ornate wobbegong. Uh, currently, she's only about 1.15 centimetres long. Uh, she's, we're expecting her to grow actually up to about 60 centimetres as an adult. Um, it can take up to six or seven years to actually get to that kind of size before she's able to reproduce herself. Uh, she is one of the smaller species of uh, wobbegong that we have in the aquarium. Uh, they do, do go up to about uh, three metres long. Uh, which is normally a big spotted wobbegong. Uh, now, wobbegongs can be found predominantly around the Australian Indonesian coastline, uh, as far up as Japan, which have their own species of wobbegong. Uh, the great feature about wobbegong sharks is, although they're not grey like a normal shark, they do have this amazing pattern of jigs, and it makes them very, very different. So they use their camouflage in many, many ways. Uh, predominantly, it's because they are a predatory... Uh, uh, um, they find their food in a predatory way. Uh, they don't expel a lot of energy. They do generally sit on the bottom of the tank or on the bottom of the ocean floors. They're generally found in rocky areas and areas where they can fully blend in. Uh, during the evening, being a nocturnal animal, they're a little bit more active um, and they'll move out a little bit onto open spaces. They're very much an opportunistic hunter, so they'll wait for animals to swim over the top of them. Um, the great feature about these guys is, as you can see, it's just moving around a little bit there. Um, they don't very move very much, so they wait until their prey comes towards them. So they'll eat anything from uh, fish invertebrates, uh, crabs, and uh, octopus would be a great delicacy for a fully grown um, wobbegong shark. Now, as you can see, the main feature of a wobbegong shark is that their heads are extremely large, and so are their mouths. Um, they're a very flat animal, so they like to blend in well to the bottom of the tank. Uh, the other feature they have to find their prey and to help them blend in is uh, some dermal lobes, which are like small whiskers that hang on the bottom of the actual animal itself. Uh, they help them blend into the rocks. So um, they do come in sort of various colours and sizes. Um, they do have the ability uh, to adapt to their environment a little bit. It can take a few days, but they can actually change colour and blend into the sea bottom. So guys, if you've got any questions uh, about these animals, particularly and you'd like me to answer them, I'm happy to answer questions. I wish we had longer to talk about them because they're certainly an interesting animal. Um, but thank you so much again for, for watching part two of the live streams. Please tune in on Wednesday the 20th of August to our Kelly Tartans Aquarium uh, for our next live stream and you can continue your deep blue journey. Thanks.